कम बैक एवरी वन टू द हेलो वर्ल्ड गाय दिस इज एन दर एपिसोड ऑफ द एंड्रॉइड ब्रेकआउट गेम इन सी प्लस प्लस सीरीज एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू बाई क्विकली इंप्लीमेंटिंग आर शेयर क्लास सो दैट वी कैन गेट स्टार्ट विद ड्राइंग स्प्राइट्स इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो इन द लास्ट वीडियो वी सेट अप द बेसिक रेंडर इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू बी डूंग शेयर सो दैट वी कैन यूज दिस शेयर इन साइड ऑफ रेंडर टू स्टार्ट एक्चुअली मेकिंग आर गेम सो इन साइड ऑफ द शेयर आई एम गोइंग टू जस्ट गो हेड एंड क्रिएट अ कपल ऑफ पब्लिक एंड प्राइवेट स्टफ सो द फर्स्ट थिंग आई क्रिएट इज ए फंक्शन दैट वू टेक लाइक टू कॉन्स्ट करेक्टर pointed strings uh, vertex code and fragment code and also we'll have a a function called use uh, which will be const and it will basically just use the shader and among private variables we'll have a uint32 representing the id of the shader uint32 is of course not a built in type we'll need to include the cstd in header for that so yeah that would uh, work and now you can see it gives no problems and uh, now i'm going to go under shader.cpp and in here we are going to start the implementation so we are going to put the like from source thing here and then we are going to uh, basically say mm, we are going to i'm going to like quickly go over this process of creating a shader we will create an integer called success to represent our success uh, or whether compilation of shader works or not and an info log as well to kind of get the info about whether wh why the shader compilation failed and we'll create uh, like uh, we'll call gl create shader with gl vertex shader uh, and we'll store the result in au in 32t called vertex and then we'll set the shader source then we'll compile the shader and if you don't understand this uh, you might not if you have got no experience with opengl before i have got a series on the basics of opengl and the shader class is pretty similar to that one so you should probably check that out anyways if it fails we'll get the info log and log an error message and uh, of course we'll need to include the appropriate header files uh, and for that we'll just go ahead and include uh, firstly logging.h and also gles2/gl2.h Uh, after that we are going to go here and do similar things for the fragment shader uh, we'll also give the error message if that fails and uh, in the end we'll need to link these shaders we'll do that uh, like this and we'll give an error if that fails so yeah like that and uh, we'll also delete the shaders at the end when we don't need them anymore so yeah i just went over this really quickly because uh, well you know this is some basic open gl stuff if you don't know this you should probably check out the my basic open gl series because uh, that would cover the basics this is like not really the basic series uh, and of course we're going to implement you the use uh, shader use function which will just call gl use program on the shader Now, in order to actually go ahead and implement functionalities for setting uniforms in our shader, because in order to pass data to our, uh, you know, OpenGL graphics, so we'll need to use uniforms. So we'll need to have functions for that. And as I said before, when we started this series, we are going to be using a GLM math library here. And uh, integrating GLM with Android Studio is basically the simplest thing ever, because it's uh, mainly a header-only library. So you need to just go ahead and download GLM and then copy the whole GLM folder. You can do that and copy it and paste it inside of this uh, CVE folder. And once you do that, uh, GLM is just a part of your project. You don't need to really do anything else because it's just like only headers. So in here we can quite easily include it uh, by saying GLM slash GLM dot HPP, and then we are going to. go ahead and uh, uh, implement these functions so i've got a couple of four functions here uh, which are going to be different uniforms uh, for setting different uniforms uh, we need to include string here by the way and uh, these functions will allow us to set vector 2 vector 3s matrices or floats uh, inside of our uh, shader so we are going to do that and for the implementations i'm going to just go ahead and it's going to be pretty simple for the implementations uh, as you can see we are just uh, Mm, you know, uh, let's see. It's uh, uh, you can see that we are just uh, setting the vector trees and matrices like pretty simply using GL uniform matrix four F V or GL uniform three F and other kind of GL uniform functions. And again, if you don't understand that, you can check out the other thing, uh, other series. Uh, so yeah, you can see that this uh, is. Uh, pretty awesome and we have got this of course there's a uh, an error it's giving here saying that the value ptr is not recognized we need to include the uh, header uh, another header here uh, which is actually uh, you know the will have this function so it's glm slash uh, uh, gtc slash type pointer dot hpp so once we include that it should stop giving that error and everything should work so yeah we have got uh, this working now our shader is pretty much uh, like we've got a functional shader file here so yeah that's pretty awesome so now we'll actually get starting writing our shaders and this is where things get a bit different because uh, the shaders that we write like for normal open gl are different from the shaders we are going to be writing for open gl es especially this is es version 2 we are not targeting 3 we are targeting 2 which is a lower one which 
means we'll be able to run on more devices but uh, it does mean that we'll have to do some things quite a bit differently so let's get started with the vertex shader i'm going to create a const expression uh, called uh, a const character pointer just like you know a c style string and it's going to be const expression to kind of make it a compiler constant and it's going to be called vertex shader code and we're going to get started with this and uh, we are going to start like basically putting the whole shader uh, inside of a string so we can like uh, we the first thing we'll need to do is define an attribute vec4 called vertex now uh, when we were doing like normal opengl we used to generally provide like layout location is equal to zero and we say in vec4 vec2 vertex and we specify all of our vertex attributes like in uh, with in and we also have got out if you want to pass something to the fragment shader in here it's different we specify stuff we are taking in with the attribute keyword we'll have an attribute back for called vertex here and then we'll have a uniform mat for called projection so that's going to be our projection we are also going to have, have another uniform mat for called model so it's going to be our projection matrix this is going to be the individual model matrix and we'll also have a varying vec2 called text codes now what is this uh, we of course want to pass our texture coordinates to our fragment shader currently we are going to be doing a like simple color based fragment shader but later we'll need the text coordinates uh, when we are doing actual texture so we'll uh, have uh, these be passed to the fragment shader using this uh, uh, varying keyword so we specify varying to mean that it will basically vary and we can set it here and we can also get it inside of the fragment shader so uh, we can't do like out like we used to do in uh, like normal open gl 3.3 so here uh, we have got that and you might want to point this out uh, like uh, that uh, this vec4 vertex I have got uh, the first vec2 is going to be its position and the next vec2 is going to be the text coordinates so we are going to now implement main here void main and I am going to go here and say gl position is equal to projection multiplied by model multiplied by vector4 and we are going to say ve vertex.xy for the z we are going to say 0 and for the w homogeneous coordinate we are going to pass 1 of course since this is a point and we will get the first uh, like two of this so to get the actual position and now for the texture coordinates we can just set it to zw text coordinate text code is equal to vertex dot zw so yeah that's pretty much it for our vertex shader it's pretty small now our fragment shader is going to be even simpler uh, first line is going to basically mm, say the precision uh, we are going to specify the precision which means that our float basically will have the precision of like mediums uh, precision so we'll say precision medium p is float uh, we'll just do that and after doing that we can get the same uh, varying text codes here using that vector 2 we are not using this but still we are going to implement this here and for now we are going to not do the texture instead we are going to just allow a color basic so that we can leave the texture loading to, to a later video after that uh, we will create a void main and then we are going to go ahead and uh, set uh, and by the way you uh, know that in like opengl 3.3 uh, like uh, normal opengl we generally have uh, an out variable called frag color and we specify that uh, using out inside of fragment shader and we set that now in this uh, it's a bit different that we actually just set a gl variable called gl underscore frag color and we set that to whatever color we want we are going to just set it to what the color that we get and a bit of a mistake here I forgot to add parentheses uh, here and also there and apart from that we have got a pretty much uh, uh, pretty good looking vertex shader source and also our fragment shader source so after that we are going to go ahead and basically uh, uh, we you can see that uh, we have got like uh, if we are, we are going to specify a private variable uh, called shader which is going to be of type shader and of course don't forget to include the header so this will basically be only a one a one shader with which we will our render and we are going to just say shader uh, after specifying these we are going to say shader dot from source we are going to call that method and we are going to pass it our vertex and fragment sources and after doing that it should basically yeah that's that's pretty much it it should uh, uh, load the shader from source correctly so yeah that's that's pretty awesome so now uh, you might want to actually run this to test whether it gives any error regarding the shader so we are going to do just that we are going to run this and see whether uh, it logs any errors on the shader or whether it works correctly of course we won't be able to actually see any output because currently we have not actually drawn anything but that is going to be for a later video for this video we are only going to check if our shader is compiling correctly 
so you can see that I get a yellow screen here which means that well it uh, compiled successfully the shaders because uh, well it's in the log it did not give any error so if I open up the app again you can see it says init window and says exiting app and I actually close it but uh, apart from that uh, you can see that it is actually getting that done correctly the, uh, the it is not giving any errors about shader compilation failing which means that well the shader compilation is succeeding so yeah guys it's pretty much it for this video I'll see you in the next one in which we will start implementing actual like drawing functionality for our uh, render I'll see you in the next one make sure to like and subscribe as well and share this video with other people and bye